Hey everybody, it's been a little while and Miss Kira is sitting here with her electric and gasoline powered and we're going to show you some stuff, aren't we? Yep. And this is from the same company that makes this cool little generator right here. This is a little bitty generator and it is tough. It's nice. Uh, I got previous videos on that, but this is going to cover this really cool, I'm going to show you, look. Yeah, that's a horizontal shaft engine on a lawnmower. This one over here is an 80 volt electric lawnmower. But the links below the video to all of these power smart items. This is really giving Briggs and Stratton a run for their money. So let's get everything set up. And right now, um, hmm. Carrie, you're in the wrong outfit. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, Dad, I'm ready. Thanks. Get your hat on, dear. Time to unbox. Lawn mowers. So let's get both of these unboxed and on the table. They're going to be in parts. They're going to have some assembly. Both of them. This is an 80 volt monster cutter and it's got a very, very high amperage battery. And this is a gasoline powered three in one. And it is a standard mower. But like I said, it has got a really neat motor on it 209 cc's. So we'll be right back. Y'all stay tuned. Kira is ready to mow, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go, guys. All right, now we're going to get started with unboxing the three year warranty gasoline. And this one does come with a good warranty, too. It is a two-year warranty. For this one to have a full three-year warranty, when the best you can get with most mowers nowadays is a year, that's pretty good. And it's backed, so you could even buy an extension on that, too. All right, we're going to open these up and set them out on the table, and we'll start a little quick assembly process. All right, she's got one open, and I want you all to watch very carefully how she's cutting these open. And there's a reason for that. And you got to make sure that when you cut these open, that you cut very light. So she's got her blade set to a little tiny amount. She puts her fingers on both sides of it because directly underneath is the grass catchers in both of them. Now, yes, it does have a piece of foam on the top, but you can cut things like that and be very careful. So they do come with their little packages of goodies and this one back here even has its quart of oil with it. Looks like almost a quart, 16 ounces. So well, that's a pint. Oh, so it came, it came with its own Power Smart oil. Now, I only recommend that you use it for break in. And then I recommend for the Chinese engines that you're going to use Castrol. And you want to use Castrol 1030 in those engines, and they'll last you a very long time. All right. So these are pretty simple. And what she's done is she's made this very easy. This is a Cura trick. So she's made this very easy. And uh, she has a little platform. And this way she can get the mowers out without struggling with them. All right, so we're going to get them out and start the assembly. It's pretty simple. And here she's got more bad the batteries. This is the battery. This is the battery that comes with this. This is very good. Kira, come here, Kira. Turn around. Show them this battery. This is its battery. Here, turn it that way. It's a very freaking large battery. It is very big. Um, I'm not positive the amp hour yet. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's somewhere around 8 amps at uh, 80 volts, which this thing could just run forever. But here is the coolest part of this mower. You expect it's from China. It's going to be all plastic. It's not. Yep. Yeah, but metal chassis. That's cool. Looks like it's the same identical chassis that's used on this one. And this is all aluminum to make it much lighter. This is standard metal. As you can see, it sticks to it. Um, you know, typical for a gasoline lawnmower. In fact, the more metal in the gasoline lawnmower, the more they last, the longer they last. This is what you were wondering about right here. This is a horizontal shaft engine so let's get over here Kira and 
not a lot of them are built like this. So this one here runs down and has a right angle drive. So it comes with the chute, dis the discharge chute. And of course it has a very nice, this is a really nice, I had it out, out of the box looking at it. It's got quite a nice uh, discharge setup on it. It really seals well for mulching. So um, all your books, your warranty in multiple languages is all right here. And this thing has really got, I mean, you can't buy a Briggs one or uh, anything today that has half the data this thing's got in it. And this is a seriously good book. I've just spent about 15 minutes going through this. And it even has a complete, all the different parts, the schematics that you would never have expected in one of these import lawnmowers. So, I mean, just quite unbelievable, to be honest, that I did not expect any of this to be like that. I expected a little pamphlet. like Yeah, we expected something like this. You know, on the uh, front, put oil in it. On the back, put gas in it. And... Uh, Pull lever and Molan. Pull lever and Molan. These guys, uh, Power Smart is, 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 they're coming up. And I think they've got some uh, um, either European or American engineers involved in them. So now this is pretty simple and straightforward. Okay. So it has the simple hinge with the tightening mechanism on it. And then it will come with two bolts. That's all it requires. This is the gas model. Two bolts. It has a, an assembly wrench. That's it. So it fits the two bolts and it also fits other bolts. So it looks like about a 10 millimeter kind of handy. And then of course they all come with the, you know, somewhat useful spark plug wrench. I don't ever use them, but it does. And this has a name brand spark plug. This is not, um, self-powered. Uh, she doesn't like them that way. I don't know why I'm trying to give her one. She won't take it. And self-powered was another 80 bucks or something and um, a little outside of our current finance. So it's a pretty simple setup. The gas tank, of course, the oil is right out here in the front to check it. All right. So we're going to get this one here put together uh, and we'll put them both on the floor. This one here is just kind of snap connect. It's just when you, you can extend it back and forth and it just cam locks in and the same way back here. And it has the grips for that. And a very large, very large, look at this thing, yeah. grass catcher on it. Actually, it looks like it's larger than the gas-powered yeah, one. I think this one was a little bit heavier than that one. And I, yeah, she's right. I think this electric one might be five pounds heavier than the gas-powered one. Um, in the book on it also, it is extremely well documented. Anytime that you get one of these products and they put the much effort into this as they had that's a lot but um this is an 80 volt and i would call this a harbor freight killer that's yeah. a monster of a battery it's got to be 20 percent bigger physically than the harbor freight and every bit of three or four pounds heavier so okay. so she's going to show you the comparison of now granted it's a 40 volt but you would just imagine that the 40 volt battery would be half the size 40 volt 80 volt you know half the size and <laughs> it's a rimp man i mean it is tiny and that right there that ventilation that right there is not just <laughs> for looks it's for function but this thing here sitting next to it is just freaking tiny so this one is a four amp hour and I don't know, but I think this one here is a six. There it is, six amp hour at wow. 84 volts. That's a lot of juice. Yeah. So uh, it fits in here and it has a matching grill here that is for the cooling. As you notice, total passive pass through cooling. And it's got, I mean, it looks almost like a gasoline mower engine. A lot of them are starting to do that. But this one here also has a little set of lights up in the front. You can see that down in there. See that? And it has got a spring load with a simple, really simple removal mechanism. So you just do like that and the battery pops out. So we'll go ahead and throw the battery in here before I get it off the table. It is, it is monster. And just give it a little push. Actually, probably give it a little tap. 
and it locks in right there. And um, it's heavy battery. And um, look at the size of this charger. So let me grab that so I'll give you all a little idea here. This is like your little common. This is actually larger, believe it or not, than most tool battery chargers. This one is. And in comparison, woof, man. And this thing here, this is about eight pounds. It's significant. It's a big deal. So we'll get this, we'll get this all put together. And um, that's it for getting the battery out. Other batteries can be ordered. They're working on that. This does have a childproof, you know, put it on your key ring key that does allow it to function. That is still a standard lawnmower with a better design. And you're going to see these here shortly out mowing. We're going to mow with them side by side. <laughs> She's going to run a pass down and back, a pass down and back, and then you can take a look at what the results are and you, and also the sound. And um, we won't we'll, we'll follow along at the same distance to give you an idea of sound versus sound. And I'm sure it's a big difference. All right. So we're going to take these down. There is a crossbar that mounts from here. So when you lift this up, you'll see those two points there. And of course, there is four screws with it and it embeds into locking sockets. So we're gonna get these put together and side by side them, and then we'll be out mowing with them. Is that right? Are you the yeah, mower? I'm gonna test them out. I'm gonna be the first to see, you're second. Maybe I'm second. Maybe your brother's second. And then your mother's third. Mm -hmm. and, then... And, and then your aunt's fourth. Yeah, there we go. And then the neighbor's kid has fifth. Yeah, I pay him five bucks. And then you just back to you again, there's five. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good, Dad. Goals. Sounds good. Oh, wait. I'll never get to mow with it. Nope. Ah. All right. So one of the things is this thing has numerous settings. Make sure, make sure that when you close these up that you're looking in and seeing that it has the notches. Now, that's a storage notch. This is a useful notch for shorter people, and this is for taller people, which she is. She's like 5'10 almost. So, and also make sure you pull back your plastic tabs enough to where you can get your bar in because, um, it's yeah. a little tight, it's a little snug fit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of it's a bit of a hassle. So, make sure but you do okay it won't pull these out. back really well, and, and then, get then your screws. you'll close it off. And she's going to put in from down here the screws that will close it up. There's four of them included. And remember, you're going into plastic, so tighten firmly, but don't over tighten. Oh, yeah, it'll, it'll, yeah, it's plastic. <laughs> and as far as these are concerned, do not, when you start to tighten these up, you'll notice a decent amount of slack, but this is a full rolling cam. So make sure that you do not try to tighten this up by spinning it first, line it up at the most convenient spot, and then close it up. Now, over here, a very, very nice setup here, and it's good, good spring tension, a lot more than some of the other ones I've used, and it has a standard uh, blowback um, apron on the back of the mower right there, and a all-in-one full adjust, so one spot adjusts everything, so your front, your back, and you just pull out and just normally move it. I'm sure everybody's used to those now, and we'll have this thing tested up, and then we'll Get that on the floor next. Well, the final assembly is up. We've got it extended fully, and we're not going to mount the uh, the bagger on the back of it right now. There's no point in that. So now she's going to show you how the side shoot goes. So I'm going to take my side shoot, and I'm going to lift this part up, and there's a metal bar right down there, and I am just going to stick it right under the bar. Try to. And then I will put it down like this. And it has holes right here. So if if you choose to mount it permanently, you could do that as well. Yeah, see, so and down here, you can take this off if you wanted to and mount it permanent right there and right there if you wanted to mount it permanently. Yep. Okay. And right here is the battery compartment. And I'm going to 
stick the battery in there, hopefully. Right there like that. Give it a push up. Has takes to be takes a good, it, it's a tight fit. It is a tight fit, especially since it's new. Thank you. There it goes. <laughs> and you'll see it's in fully when that clip is holding the battery in. Yep. And then there's where your key goes. She's going to fire it up and we're going to give it a lesson and I'm going to do it from the same distance, halfway down the bar, halfway down the push bar on each mower. All right, go. Go. Okay. And now what this thing has on this kind of, I thought at first that Kira came up with a uh, great excuse. <laughs> I thought that's dumb. Okay. Yeah. This is a light. It's a light. But, I just turn it on. Um, there's the button for the light, and she's like, well, you know, when you mow up underneath your travel trailer and stuff, I'm you like... Can't see, you can't see the stuff down there. You can't hardly see, um, like, when you're coming up near the frame to run into it. So if you get closer, you see, if you get too close, it'll be faded, you know, back and forth. So I'm just like, I guess it is a good idea. And you don't know? forget about all the two by fours I have ran over that we have slid under those things. Exactly. <laughs> two by, yeah. Um, and power cords, huh, Kara? Um, don't, do you run over power cords? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, not on purpose. So on this purpose. belongs to someone else and we're just going to test it out and we're going to mow with it and then it's going to, you know, go to its new home. Now, yeah, we do install lights on our lawnmowers. We, we do actually put lights on our lawnmowers. We um, so we're going to get this one down next. It looks like a fairly simple build, as I showed you beginning. And this is just a clip for cable support and um, pretty simple. So we'll get this down and we'll have to fire it up outside. So yeah. same thing. And these two will compete to see which one does good. Which one wins? Which one wins? And we'll have a report at the end of the video for how far a, a tank of gas went in minutes and how far a charge of battery went in minutes. So y'all can make a decision there. All right, let's get that one down. All right, so now we have the gasoline model down here on the floor. And like I said, this is a really unique gasoline model. So she's going to go ahead and get this push bar lifted up. And the way it works is you just lift it just like that. And it, watch watch for your cable. This is your, your blade brake cable right here. And um, get these straightened up on there. And then tighten those up. Yep. That's okay. And as she's getting this other one done over here, I'm going to drop the screws in or bolts. And they are, they do have a Phillips on the end. So we're going to drop them in there and just kind of get them a little hand started. Like that, make sure they're in. And then she can tighten those up with a screwdriver and then finalize it with that little wrench that they supplied with this because there's a pretty decent little wrench they put with it. Let me check that one there, make sure that got started. Yes, okay, that's good. And so she's gonna put those in and I will grab the little black cable manager. This is called a cable manager. <laughs> no. It's not the person that works at the store. It is to manage your cable. So I will take it and it actually goes in just like that. And we'll snap it on right there. And a lot of these historically love to break, but this one's not too bad. And then pop that into place. And now your cable is controlled there to where it's not going to fly around. But this is the part that... Johnny Two Chins likes the most. So she's going to grab her little wrench there. She's already got those put in. And remember, this is a tube. Don't over tighten this. Firm it up good. After your first use, check it. If it's going to be loose, put a little bit of Loctite on it. That's good. Okay. Now, this engine here fascinates me. So it's a standard, standard horizontal engine, go-kart motor, whatever you'll call it, tiller motor, and 209 cc. But it has this right angle drive. It doesn't appear to be gear reduction. It appears to be a one-on-one -on -one because gear reduction, it would be significantly bigger than it is now. Um, you would have to have a, a pretty good size gear. I mean, it might be 
a, a slight gear reduction, but there's nothing obvious in how much that would be. All right. So we're going to lift this up. Kira is going to go back here in the back and hold it. And we're going to take a look at the underbody of this one because before I put oil in it, I want to check it out. Now, gasoline capacity is about a liter and a half. Push down further, Kara. All right. So you'll see here, there is the, the uh, cover right there. And it is a mulching blade. But there's the cover for it. And it seems to be pretty nice. It runs all the way back here in the back for a uh, drive. You can get one with a drive style that goes with it. But it has both the abilities to do both. Now, this one here. Um, any more than manufacturing would have full of options. Okay, so go ahead and let it down. So it is um, a pretty simple, a pretty simple engine, honestly. But it is a beautiful use of the technology. I really like that. I believe that it is gear reduction going to the blade. It's not gear reduction here. So I think it has two. Um, eight millimeter or 10 mil, 10 mil, two 10 millimeter belts or chain. And it is a, I think this is going to be a uh, two to one is what it looks like by the pulley size of the housing. Now we're not going to take that apart. I'm sure somebody eventually will, but if you look at the housing back here and you look up here, it's about a two to one. So that's pretty good. That means when you get into heavy weeds and heavy cutting, this thing will handle it. Uh, especially the fact that the 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 direction the pistons trap the torque there's there's more torque in a horizontal engine than there is in a vertical engine so that's a pretty smart move right there all right gas tank simple common sense all common sense what is really unique about this is this is the standard honda clone motor so you could probably swap this all out for a propane carburetor if you want to I'm sure you can make that fit. So far, looks pretty good. Real good. Now, as a replaceable standard, looks like anything that you'd find off of Briggs or whatever, um, primer bulb on it. And the oil is up here in the front. It's not confusing at all. And um, I love this part right here with the oil. I think that's kind of cool. So we'll get the oil in it. We'll get the gas in it. And then we'll have that one and this one outside here in a few minutes all right guys she has got it out here and the battery is fully charged as we'll see right here fully charged up it don't flicker except in my phone there and Kira's going to go ahead and put it in the mower the other mower sitting out here so this is 80 volt electric mower versus I guess the four and a half horsepower gas mower. Press the key. Drop her key in there for her yeah. safety. And I guess young kid's safety. And over here, we have a mower that is filled all the way because I even spilled some. Okay. So a mower that's fully filled, probably just a hair too much. And we're going to run these until they quit. So we're going to see what our run time is for gas and electric, both of them fully charged up or fully prepared for what they are supposed to do. And she's going to start with this electric one now, and I'm going to hold this here and we're going to walk a few feet so you can hear it outside. She's powering up. And this is some really, really, really heavy, very heavy, tall weeds on a part of our property here. And that thing had no problem whatsoever. She's going to make a little return on it. Kira forgets to hold the handle down. It's electric.
that's almost a foot tall of weeds this thing's cutting all right now you can't push it so fast you got to remember all right now over here this one has both the power switch and the blade brake in one gotcha all right now we haven't started this so hold on all right give it a fire up maybe the starter's bad here hold this yeah you did All right, so that's a first start scenario. I kind of think the electric one might be louder. All right, so we're gonna find out. We're gonna run them and we'll give you a time at the end with the time for each one posted next to them. All right, Kira, got a busy hour or two. guys this is the grass clippings that we had gotten from the yard and it was a mess but it looks so much nicer now you got to make sure that you empty out the baggers otherwise it'll start to really work hard and it won't cut the grass as good so if it starts not cutting the grass that great empty the bagger this one not so much but this one definitely um this one went for 33 minutes and this one went for 50 and i would honestly suggest this lawnmower for um, people who like live in the suburbs and things like that. And then this one is for people who live out in the country like like us. Taller weeds, you know. All right. So as you can see, she done a full test. This took her an hour and a half basically to do. This one holds a decent amount of gas. And it ran for 50 minutes before it ran out of gas. And it ran cutting. Now, it took her a little bit of a learning curve here because this one puts more grass in its catcher and it has a bigger catcher. Yes. I don't know if you can tell that, but it actually is a little bigger. Um, they look similar, but I'd say it's a half a cubic foot more and um, or I'm probably somewhere close to that. Mm -hmm. This one here seems to chew the grass and mulch it better so it doesn't fill the catcher as well. But that, if you are a suburbanite, this is the winning mix right here and it's safer because if and it's because if yeah I hit harder stuff it, oh yeah she, then she, it'll shut off she found that if it, she ran into something with it it just shut itself off mm -hmm. this one here if she ran into something with it it cut it down to a stub um so this one's very powerful very very powerful so um kira ran this thing and, and didn't realize how good it cuts that's a excellent design using that horizontal engine as you can see there to run that this one here is actually, this one here is actually a, a very good item. It cuts equal to or greater than the Harbor Freight models that are sold that's similar to it and definitely has a lot of power, a ton of power. But be cautioned, it will fill that bag hardcore. It don't like leave anything on the ground. It puts it in the bag. This one, I'd say, left 20% on the ground. Mm -hmm. And this is a 75-gallon tote that's almost double-filled with clippings from her work. Pretty good. So your conclusion, Kara? The chickens are going to be very happy. The chickens are going to be very happy. <laughs> so that's going some of it in the chicken coop. All right, guys, y'all be good. And um, pick one you like. They seem to work pretty good. Mm -hmm.